be quiet for 30 minutes. All right, you ready? Why is your leg so open? Because I'm uh, uncomfortable. <laughs> All right, so three, two, Wait, one. Mic fixed? I think so. All right, so ready? I know you're nervous when you make that sound. I'm not nervous. All right, so three, two, one. What up, family? Um, listen, welcome back. This is the Be Your Own Testimony podcast with the Entrepreneur Couple. And, podcast, uh, YouTube, all the networks. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the start and stop cycle, right? Can you see something on that one? No. The start and stop cycle, why people start things and they start them because they're excited, but they never finish them. And the perfect story we're going to use is we're going to use our story about how we started a podcast two years ago, three years ago, 2020, 2020. Right. And we made one episode mm -hmm. and here we are uh, three years later and we're on episode number two. So clap it up. Episode number two, right? Clap it up. Episode number two. Um, so we, we, we actually had this conversation yesterday and we were talking about why we only made one episode do you remember what we said why we only made one episode yeah i told you it was life and there were it wasn't anything specific it was mm -hmm. just a, a whole bunch of stuff a whole bunch of stuff yeah do you think other people go through what we go through like they they start something and they're really excited it's something that they want to start right yeah. and then they just stop it they just not finish it i'm not gonna say they quit because i don't think they quit they just don't finish it. Listen, if we, if we did it, yeah. they do it too. They did it. Yeah. They're Listen, going through it. They did it. They feeling the same feelings, all of that. If you can relate to starting something and stopping mm -hmm. and not finishing, just comment in the in the comment section for me um, what it is that you started and why you didn't finish it. I know you didn't quit. You just didn't finish it. I know right. you're going to get you back can, to you it. You'll come back even if it's three years later. <laughs> right. You know? Right. You're going to come back. But uh, one of the things for us was, I remember we started a podcast. The first episode was called God's Plan, Not Yours. Back. Right. We were mm -hmm. excited. Mm -hmm. um, you did a really good job of the cover. You got us on a bunch of platforms, right? How, how, what did you do? It's, you just go online. <laughs> you go, but I mean, it's not that simple, though. It was simple, but it's like people don't know how to do that. That's true. I mean, I went on Google. I um, Googled how which best platforms to put yeah. um, us on. And we were on Apple. Yeah. So I. I forgot who I did it. I think it was it Spotify. Or we was it? Spotify. We was I don't think it was Spotify. It was Anchor. You use Anchor. and then and and then I switched over. But Anchor, you know, you just got to go through. It, they kind of like have a checklist. You go through the whole checklist of mm -hmm. all the streaming sites that you want to mm -hmm. be on, and that's it. That was really. I cool. think what what took the most time um, creating those things is the intro, the bio, mm. and then making sure that you have a. Uh, content to post <laughs> right 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 to promote it right so that was it yeah. it's so funny with that because here we are three years later with our mm -hmm. second episode mm -hmm. and we don't even have an intro we don't even have none of that fancy stuff that we thought we needed back then right no, we don't um we didn't even talk about that we didn't talk about that this right this time around this time around. Be before I was like I had a binder I said baby yeah. I do the intro we she still do got this. that binder the binder's binder. over there we, we gotta do the intro we gotta do mm -hmm. this we gotta do that we had a beat we had, we had a music. Be, yeah, all right. Um, not to say that those things aren't important. However, I think we made a decision this time to just just do it. Yeah. Just do it. I think one of the things for that motivated us was we heard a stat that said Say it right um, this time because I was just out of it. out of the podcast that and we're gonna are made, we're gonna post it too. We're gonna out of the podcast that are made, ninety percent or ninety to ninety nine percent of the podcasts mm -hmm. that start, they they all they need is to make 20 episodes to get to the 1% of your industry. You heard that? So if, if you're in lawn care, if you're a beautician, if you're in um, whatever you're in, if mm -hmm. you're in marriage counseling, all you need to do is make 20 episodes and then you will get into the 1% of your industry. In the podcast in world. In the podcast world. But the thing about that is 90 to 99% of people do not mm -hmm. get to that 
one percent level wow. and why why they don't get there because what they stop where um paralysis analysis yeah procrastination yeah excuses excuses legitimate excuses life kids that's what happened money. for us right <laughs> Right, right. Anything, anything in between, anything in between the black and the white happened. Yeah, yeah. Because for us, we made one episode, and when we heard that stat, we were like, "Oh snap!" They're talking about us because mm -hmm. we like, we didn't get out of the one we didn't get out of the one episode. Right. And then with that, we made a decision to go at it. And it it it, it was still challenging for us to go at it because yeah, we have five children, you know, yeah. different schedules. I work late nights. Damo is usually home with the kids, but then trying to figure out how to do it in our home <laughs> with people who live downstairs, <laughs> um, grass people, people who right. cutting grass, right. you know, all this stuff. And I'm proud of us. Yeah, there's somebody outside right now banging on a roof. <laughs> right. So if you hear nail guns going off, that's because the neighbor is fixing their roof across the street. Right. I'm, I'm really proud but of us. Something that you said, because our schedule was not always like this. So no. I know you said your schedule at night, me being here with the kids in the day. Mm -hmm. But our schedule was not like this. There was a point in time where our schedule was identical for about four years. Yeah. And even with the, identi we, even with the identical schedule, we still did not do what we we're supposed to do. Yeah. And uh, I think that's what we wanted to talk about today. Yesterday, we had a discussion about getting up and doing what you got to do for you. Definitely. And uh, I think I think yesterday, I kind of came and said, hey, babe, I need to have a CEO conversation with you. And um, when I came to you, I said, remember what I said to you? I don't know, you, but you was, you was trying not to hurt my feelings and whatever. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, I said to her... How is it that when it's time... So, but give the context behind it. The context well, behind it okay, was... Can you give the context and I tell story? So what happened is that, you know, we finally decided, all right, we're going to put the podcast back out, the YouTube, everything back out. And we had a conversation a few days ago and he stated to me, hey, what, how are we going to set everything up? I said, okay, we're going to do it on Monday. We're going to do it from 9 to 12. And I sent him a whole text message to just remind him of the mm. conversation that we had. So boom. So it's Friday. We have the conversation on Friday. Then um, Saturday comes. It's regular life for us. Mm -hmm. But we knew that we were going to record for Monday. Yeah. And so now Monday comes up. And when Monday comes in the text message, it says that we were going to do whatever we have to do for content from 9 to 12 yeah. a.m. Mm -hmm. So now he comes to me in the morning. <laughs> and it's, what time is it? It's 10 o'clock. And he tells me, hey, when are you going to get up? Yeah. And I'm like, what time is it? He's like, 10 o'clock. And I was like, I didn't say anything. I was like, all right, cool. Let me get up. And so he was like, I'm going to go make a bottle for the baby. Um, Grace is home. Grace is only, she's about to be one. Right. And Aaliyah's home. So he goes downstairs to make a bottle for the baby. And I get up, fix the bed, and, you know, I, I get myself ready. However, you could just tell he was in his, he was in his feelings. <laughs> he was in his feelings. I was in my feelings because you know it was supposed to be from nine to twelve. But honestly, because I didn't set up Sunday, so Sunday I kind of like restructure from for the week. So Sunday I didn't put in my mind that I was going to record on Monday, even though we spoke about it, because there's just a lot going on. So I just I honestly really forgot. So, but when he came to me and told me, "Hey, you know, when are you going to get up?" I was like, "Oh, okay, it's, it's Monday." Boom. Yeah. So, so I, I, I ain't fussed about it. I got up. However, you know, he felt like he needed to tell me about myself. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny because. And just to, and, and another thing is that night. So Sunday night, for some reason, the baby kept on waking up all night. The baby is on my side of the room and the baby wakes up fussy. I have to pick her up. I ended up giving her some Tylenol because it seemed like she was kind of like running a little hot, et cetera. And so I was, I didn't really sleep. So I was like, I, I, I didn't plan to sleep the whole day, but I just wanted to sleep. But when he told me, get up, get up I got up. I think with this, this is bigger than just us making a decision to do it. And I, and, and I really want us to kind of really talk about this, not from the perspective of taking it personal, but kind of just help other people as well. Because I think there's a lot of people out there that go through the same situation where they want to do something with their partner or they want to do something with somebody. But you get in a situation where when it's time to make time to do the thing, things just always come up. And, and that thing is just not taken as a priority. 
And one of the things that I shared with Felicia, I said to her, I said, hey, how is it possible that if it's going to a job or going to a nine to five when you was a nurse, that you would go in, you would go in 30 minutes early, you will punch in, whether you're tired, whether you have a fever, whether you're sick, and you will show up. But when it's time to show up for me, your husband, or when it's time to show up for you, yourself, or when it's time to show up for us mm -hmm. as the entrepreneur couple, when it's time to show up for our business, how is it that you have these legitimate excuses? Because the excuses are valid. They're valid excuses. You're tired. The baby didn't sleep. But if the baby don't sleep and you got to go as a nurse, your butt's still going to be a nurse. Mm -hmm. So how is it that when it's for us? And I don't think it's something that we do consciously mm -hmm. or you're doing consciously. Mm -hmm. And that was when I said, hey, can I have a CEO conversation with you? Mm -hmm. Because if you weren't, if you were not my wife and you were somebody that I had on payroll, mm -hmm. I probably would have fired you or maybe not fired you, but I would have said what I had to said. Like, hey, can we have a sit down? You're a great employee. However, when it's time to record, we have a problem where you're not showing up on time. I had to go get a babysitter. The babysitter was looking at me. The clock was ticking. And then just a whole bunch of things. So can you just maybe, from our experience, can you touch on, you know, something that can help people in that situation? Because we make plans to do things for other people, for the job, and we show up. We show up for a doctor's appointment. But when you schedule something to do for yourself, why is it that we start it, we schedule it, mm -hmm. but then we get in that stop cycle of not completing the thing that we... And, and, and that thing is important to us, right? So can you touch on that? I think that... Okay, if, we, if we're going to keep it real 100%, full transparency. Yeah. Wait, so you wasn't keeping it real before? No, I'm, I'm just saying, like, you know, there's sometimes there's surface layer answers, mm -hmm. and then there's just, like, deep answers, and mm -hmm. there's just, bottom line, this is what it is. Okay. So right, the answer that I'm giving you. So is, look, I want I want the answer with the Felicia from Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I, want, I want the Brooklyn. Brook, Brook, Brook. Brooklyn I want the okay, Brooklyn face. Yeah. The reason that it's easy for me to wake up and sick and all, sit and sleep, and go to the job is because the job is attached to my chest. Mm. So I'm not paying you? It's not that you're not paying Is that what listen, it is? I need listen. to pay you? <laughs> no, listen to me. Mm -hmm. The job is attached. I mean, like, if you really look at it, we can give, like, super deep answers about it mm -hmm. and say, oh, you know, subconsciously, emotionally, mentally. Mm -hmm. Really, mm -hmm. the truth is I've been, we've been, pro I've been programmed that if I go and I punch in my 12-hour shift, this is how much I get paid per hour, and I'm supposed to expect this at the end of the week or whatever day that I get paid. So you go in sick no matter what. So I go up. in sick because I know that that gratification of that paycheck is going to happen, it's going to be there, and so I go. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now that I may not like my job, mm -hmm. I may be tired, but because I know what's attached to it, mm -hmm. I will I will go the extra mile feeling sick and all of that. That's mm -hmm. like, like that's like really the bottom line answer when it comes mm -hmm. to that, right? Now, how do you adjust that to be able to show up for yourself, mm -hmm. to show up as a CEO in your own business, mm -hmm. to show up for each other. Mm -hmm. I feel that it's more understanding the why behind it. The why? The why, the mm -hmm. reason behind it. So now I wake up, like when you woke me up at 10 o'clock, I could have just been like, babe, I'm tired and stayed in bed. Mm -hmm. And you, could, you, you couldn't say, you wouldn't be able mm -hmm. to tell me nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what's up, what time you got up today? Today I got up at 9. I mm -hmm. was finished doing whatever I had to do mm -hmm. by, but you gave me some tea last night. Don't be acting <laughs> up, okay? Listen. Um, but to, let me finish answering the question. So, with that being said, mm -hmm. the 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 shift now is I could have stayed in bed at ten o'clock when you woke me up yesterday. Mm -hmm. However, I said no. Let me get up. You know why? Not because it wasn't attached to a check, but it was attached to the fact of I know why I'm doing it. Mm. So, so you didn't know why you were doing it before. It wasn't that it wasn't that important or urgent for me. Mm. There, there, there it is, right there. You know? There it is. So it's it's important and it's urgent for me now. There it is. So it's like, okay, you, you say you want this kind of life. However, in order for you to get this type of life, there's certain things that you have to do. 
So if you're not doing the certain things that you have to do, understand that the life is going to stay the same. So now the urgency of the different type of life that I want mm -hmm. is now attached to what we're doing. So now I'm like, okay, Felicia, put your bitch in, get your ass up, go do it. I may be an hour late, but I got up. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is why this is why I love you, and this is why we make a great team because you're a Taurus, I'm an Aries, and you know we did communication programs and understand or different skills and or different styles of how we roll. And you're that person who sometimes I mean, I'm like that too. Sometimes in some situations mm -hmm. where I need to get my ducks in order, everything mm -hmm. perfect before mm -hmm. I make a move. Right. And sometimes I'm just like straight A, like yo, to we go. need to go. Right. Like we need, yo, like we need to go out here. We need to go. We need yeah. movements. Yeah. Movements, mm -hmm. please. Uh, but and then I think that switches with us because I could be A, straight like let's go, and you could be A is action oriented. Action -oriented. I just take action. Right. Action. And I could be like, no, babe, like let let's set it up. <laughs> let me let me let me figure it out. It needs yeah. to make sense in my mind first, etc. And it could be vice versa. So it's like, but most of the time, he's action oriented. You know, one of the things you said, and I, I knew the answer to that question so you know about the, the start and mine? stop situation. Uh -huh. Like I knew the answer. So what's the answer? So one of the things that we have in our relationship is whenever I like, if you look behind us. You know, you see a bookshelf back here with a couple books in here. And the great thing about this is we've actually read most of these books, mm -hmm. right? We read most of these books, probably not all of them mm -hmm. and maybe not every page in the book, but maybe a chapter or two. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've read more than Felicia. Oh, for sure. <laughs> but Felicia's definitely read some of these too. We got, we get books in pairs of twos, right? right? But one of the things Felicia always say to me is, Yo, why are you doing that book stuff on me? Stop trying to psychoanalyze me and using that book stuff on do, me, right? I do, yeah. But the reason why I share that backstory is because I know the answer sometimes. Mm -hmm. And what we've learned is when you say something out of your mouth, mm -hmm. you're only repeating what you know. Right. But when you ask a question, mm -hmm. you're giving the person a chance to share what they know. Correct. So I wanted to hear you say that it wasn't as important for me mm -hmm. because sometimes we say we want this or mm -hmm. we say we want that. But in reality, we never made that decision deep down to put it up there on the priority list to make it important. Mm -hmm. Because for me, I, I, I believe that the way you do one thing in one area, you have the potential to do the same thing in another area. That means if you can play high level on this side of the field at the job, you can play high level at this side of the field in entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So when people tell me that they don't, they, they have a problem being consistent or they have a problem being persistent, to me that's BS mm -hmm. because... But that's, it. that's your thing. Well, let me finish though. That's BS because you consistently show up to a job for five years straight, early, 6 a.m. every day or 7 to 3, uh, work a double, no complaints, uh, you go in sick, you don't call out, you go in, like you say, because there's a check, but you're consistent. You're consistently doing that. For the most part. Even when you're tired, you persistently show up, right? You persistently show up. So like you said, there's a reward attached, which is a paycheck at mm -hmm. the end of the two weeks. Right. I get it. But I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that because... You love what? I love the fact that you were able to show the persistent quality or the consistent quality. Uh -huh. I think it's a mental click uh -huh. to say, hey, you're, you're already consistent. You're already persistent. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is make that mental click mm -hmm. and apply that mental click to recording content. It's, it's, I agree with you. It, it was a mental click. It was. And that's why I say it's important for you to know why mm -hmm. the click was the why for me. You know, mm -hmm. what's the why? And they, they you know. Coming from the networking background, network marketing background, the personal development aspect, they always say, you know, know what your why is, you know, make sure that it's a why that makes you cry, et cetera. And I, I kind of knew what they were talking about, but now I understand the why doesn't make me cry, but it's enough to move me, you know? So that's why I'm just like, okay, I'm going to get up and I'm going to do what I have to do. And it, it was a click because of my why. Yeah. Because I'm like, okay, like. I need to transition from this job and I'm not going to be able to transition from this job if I don't have something else to secure the financial needs that I need, that mm -hmm. I need, you know, to take mm -hmm. care of my day to day. And there's certain things that I got to do. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm happy you made that decision. But I have a question though. Yeah. You said that you already knew. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So give me your psycho book analytic view as to the mm-hmm. answer that you had before mm-hmm. I answered. I, the way I looked at it was the position that you were in, you did not like it, mm-hmm. but it wasn't painful enough for you to make a decision to change. Okay. It's because, still not painful. Because, right. Because we move from places of pain mm-hmm. or pleasure. That's correct. Sometimes you need more pain mm-hmm. to start. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you got to go to the doctor for the doctor to tell you, hey, you need to lose weight or you're going to die. Right. Or, hey, you need to lose weight or you're going to lose your leg. Right. Hey, you need to change how you eat or we're going to have to chop off your fingers. For you to make a change. Correct. And then when you make the change, you start liking how it feels. That's the pleasure. Mm-hmm. The pleasure keeps you going. Right. And I felt like you were in a position where you did not like it, but you were still what kind of comfortable mm-hmm. with the things that you were getting. Mm-hmm. And to make the change, to do what I was asking you to do, it required sacrifice. It required you working here. And then coming to punch in with me, the thing with punching in with me is the punching with me, you are the guarantor to your guarantee of success. Because Layman's we, term. All right. We, I know what it means, but give we me know term. we we know that there's people like we know why we started a podcast three years ago. Right. We know that three years ago, if we had stayed at it, there's fifty two weeks in a year. That's three years. So fifty two weeks in a year, one episode a week. That's, let's say, 52 episodes. Let's say 50 episodes. You missed two weeks on vacation. Right. Three years, that's 150 episodes. Yeah. You mean to tell me if you did 150 episodes, you wouldn't learn something or you wouldn't have traction or you wouldn't have gotten your brand or your business or your podcast or your show, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. to a certain level? We know that you would have. Right. And we know that the people who stayed consistent at it went through COVID, you could see them having success. Not that I'm comparing or I'm looking at somebody else. You can just say... But numbers, the numbers don't lie. The numbers... And let's go yes. back to the stat. The right. people who do more than 20 podcasts, you drop yourself into the 1%. Right. So we we were the reason why we stayed stuck at the 90 to 99% level with mm-hmm. the other amounts of people right. because we did not continue. Mm-hmm. And I think at the time, it's when you're when you're in a relationship and you're trying to do something with somebody... A lot of a lot of unforeseen problems come up, whether it's they not feeling it today, you feeling it today, you said something earlier, that small thing pissed them off. Mm-hmm. You don't want to hurt their feelings. Mm-hmm. They don't want to hurt your feelings. And then at the end of the day, everybody start tiptoeing around each other till nothing gets done. Mm-hmm. So what do I mean by you have to guarantee your success is you have to have that level of confidence in yourself mm-hmm. that I'm going to bet on me. But it's hard to bet on you when it's a two-person team. Right. Because there are times when I'm like, look, if you don't want to do this, let me know. I'll go start my own joint. <laughs> I'll go, go start my own stuff. But then we can't be the it's entrepreneur vice couple. Versa. It's vice versa. I agree with you. Yeah, so that's, you that's what I mean by, you know, you're the guarantor for your own guarantee. Right. You have to make that mental decision. So we are the guarantor. Mm-hmm. To the entrepreneur couple's guarantee. Correct. And the guarantee that we decided was, hey, we got some goals we want to hit. We want to we want to hit some numbers. Right. Uh, we want to get our family in a certain position and we want to do certain things. Mm-hmm. So we don't I know, I know we're very good at not focusing on results because results can vary, mm-hmm. but focusing on the activity. Right. And that was the thing where I get up and I'm like. I don't really care about the results so much mm-hmm. because I want to see what the activities of the day-to-day look like. Show me the day-to-day activity and I can tell you the result. Right. I just wasn't really satisfied with our day-to-day activity, mm-hmm. regardless of the uns- unforeseen circumstances. Regardless of the kids, regardless yeah. of the fact that you got to punch in, regardless yeah. of the fact that you got to clean, do laundry. I'm like, so what? <laughs> I'm like, right. so what? I don't care. And you know something? At the end of the day, it's it's really a decision. Yeah. It's really a decision. You yeah. got to decide that you want it. Once you decide that you want it, you got to decide to do it. Yeah. And then you got to make sure that, that you're doing the right activities to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, but I'm, re- I'm really happy that we're here today because even though we didn't do anything for the three years, mm-hmm. we did a lot for three years. Oh, yeah. Right? We did a lot. Can you talk mm-hmm. about some of the things that we did over the last three years? Okay. 
So starting from move from New York, we moved from New York, right? Mm-hmm. And then boom, we got to hear from Georgia. I mean, you um, could you could help me fill it in, but we moved from New York. During- right, remember, don't say certain words. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to say certain words because certain words, you know, like the C word, the C O V I D word. We moved during that time, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was also six months pregnant. Yeah. Um, and then we moved to a place not knowing how it looked, just seeing yeah. virtual. So I don't know if I, if I yeah. if when I got there there was gonna be roaches or rats. We moved. We, moved, we moved on the shutdown during we the moved shutdown. On the lockdown. Um, and we moved. So we moved to Georgia. Then after that, um, hopped in a suburban. That was an interesting trip, right? Yeah. Right. After we moved, we moved again. So we moved three times. Talk about. I want to talk about. Was that. it three times or twice? We moved. So so we moved from New York. It's twice. We packed up. Right. It's funny because we wanted to go get. We were looking at cars to right. drive from New York to Georgia. Right. And we were like, it would be really nice to get a suburban. Remember yeah, that story? Yeah. And then when we got to the place, so we couldn't pay to get the suburban because we, could, we couldn't afford the suburban at the time. It. And when we got to the place, the guy was like, "Oh, this is the only car here, which is the exact suburban that we were trying to get." So. Yeah. The ease, the grace that yeah. God gave us, it was it for me, it was more confirmation that the decision that you decided to make, that was the right decision. Yeah. So we moved to Georgia. We, we moved, moved to coming. coming. Yeah, we got an apartment um, in coming. We got a, a nice, two bedroom apartment. It oh, was three, three bed- bedroom. Three three bedroom and a little den. Right? So the den was like our office. So coming from New York to a three bedroom, yeah, that we had a, was we had that a cost one and like a half bedroom. Fifteen hundred dollars. Right. We was like, we was lit with a washer yeah. and dryer inside. With a washer and dryer. Okay. We you don't got to be in a laundry mat <laughs> watching people <laughs> pulling, who don't belong there. Pulling, what, pulling the carriage down the steps yeah. and stuff. But anyway, um, so we moved. to If you know about that in New York, pushing that joint through the snow. Right. So we moved to Cummings. After we moved to Cummings, we moved to um, Gwinnett County, and so it's yeah. two places. So we moved to now, Lawrenceville, right? So we were actually went from a three bedroom with a small den to a seven bedroom house. Yeah, and we did that in a, a matter of two and a half years. Yeah, and it's interesting because when I say it, it's like, oh, for me, I'm like yeah. these I mean, two and a half years. I don't feel like I did enough. Even where we're recording right now is crazy. Right. I'm I don't around. feel like I did enough, but it, me saying it, I'm yeah. like, wow, you know, we really, we did, we did, we did well. And, you know, the kids are in good schools and we, we're doing. Had a car business, had we a Toro had, we business. We started Toro business during the COVID time. Yeah. And um, we ended up getting three cars, three yeah. white cars, Fords that did, did like very well. That, we did right. five figures with that. Just from watching a YouTube um, video that we saw. And yeah. started e commerce. We got into e commerce. We started e commerce. We, we started a apparel brand now. Got into trading, trading. Into Forex, crypto. So, so I can say this a lot of online things, marketing, a lot of the things that we did throughout the three years was we learned yeah. and we soaked up any information that will help us for the future of what's coming. So when, yeah. I, when I say that, I mean like we, we soaked up information on trading. We soaked up information on e-commerce. We soaked up information on marketing. We soaked up information in the podcast, the YouTube world. So everything that is like basically What what do you mean soak up? How do you you soak up information? Like we, we, like our day, our whole house would just be YouTube is on. We're listening to something. Podcast is on. We're listening to something. We're reading books. We bought courses. We went to a whole bunch of events. So, like, when yeah. money came into our hand, yeah. <laughs> yeah. we was we like, spent, what's the next event that we we're going to go to? What's the next money, um, course that we were going to buy? And so, like, right now we have a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. And, you know, when, when our friends come by, we, we, we're ready to talk. No, this is what I think you should do. Boom, 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 yeah. boom. This, these are the stats, et cetera. And that's because we knew that we didn't want to be where we were. Yeah, because where yeah. we were, which we're gonna show you, like kind of like some behind the scenes. You know, we were living uh, in a one bedroom house, and you know there was like, what's that hole? The sewer hole? Oh, one of the bathroom upstairs was kitchen. leaking, so they had to cut a hole in there. You know, and, and then we had to put a garbage bag right, over that. There thing. was a point in time where our whole bed broke. We ended yeah. up sleeping on the floor for. Oh, how about how about how about how about how about how about the mouse that came? From Haiti, these were Haitian. No, trained. those are Jamaican these mouses. These were Haitian no, trained no. ninja mouses. No, I'm don't telling you, these were Haitian trained ninja so, mouses. So you know, God over time, where we were at <laughs> was. Are- these are Haitian trained ninja mouses. These are not Jamaican mouses. Over time, the the house that we were at was deteriorating, and it was it was time for us to go. It was time for us to yeah. go, and 
you know, we we have the roach stories, or not roach, but mouse stories. You know, oh, the um, raccoon, the raccoons that were fighting up in the attic. Oh my god, <laughs> we have stories for days, but I we know that we weren't happy to be in it. However, if I sit here, I can say that I understand why I experienced. It. It's worth it, it, man. Listen, you are you are you are a decision. They say you are a decision. But you are a decision and faith and action and the right people and the right the right the right experience away from changing your life. It's yes. all of that put together. It's not just a decision, but it's all so of that. So just to end this off, right? Yeah. What is, you know, I, I love the number six. So let's mm-hmm. give six gems. You give three, I give three. Three six, gems. Uh-huh. As to so this so this this was a start and stop cycle. We were talking about the start and stop cycle. Start and stop cycle. So for six people who are starting things and feel stuck, and what they should do to get unstuck to start. So for somebody who's stuck right now, mm-hmm. and maybe you're in a relationship, maybe you're not, maybe you're like us, maybe you got kids and you're married and you're in entrepreneurship. Six gems mm-hmm. uh, to help you with the start and stop problem you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say. Number one, you got to work on your faith. Mm. I, I think I think faith is a big part of it because you started it, you stopped it for some reason because you felt like whatever you had wasn't good enough. Mm-hmm. And that's just poor faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just means your faith is not strong. Mm-hmm. So you got to increase your faith and boost it up there. Go ahead. What's one for you? I would say number two for me is believing in yourself and understanding that the the ideas that you have mm-hmm. they are real mm. you know they they are they're not just put inside of you because they're just put inside of you no they are real and understanding that if you believe in yourself enough to know like if this idea was put inside of me all mm. i have to do is take action then understand that once you take the action mm-hmm. everything else the steps will lead the way mm, first action i like that uh number three I would say environment is everything. Mm. Uh, environment is mm-hmm. everything. And environment goes from the people who you're hanging out with. Mm-hmm. It goes from what you're watching on TV. Mm-hmm. It goes from what you're listening to mm-hmm. in the car radio. Mm-hmm. And it goes from the pictures you have hung around your house. Mm-hmm. So what we did was we transformed our environment into our goals and dreams. We hung up pictures. We hung up affirmations. We played audiobooks. We played affirmations on YouTube. And we went to an entrepreneur event like every weekend. Yeah. So I would say number three is environment. Okay. Number four? Number four, I would say, is make a decision. Mm. You have to make a decision. And it's okay to change, mm-hmm. you know. However, make that decision and give it all that you got. Mm. Don't half ass it. Like, you make that decision and give it all that you got like with all the fiber and beans in your body if you decide to step out of the decision that you made it's it it has to be because there was no possible way for you to make it out of it right so make a decision and stick to the decision and attach your why to it too so that's that's actually number three because number four that was number four because i so i went first and you went i went you went yeah so number five is me now yeah Uh, I would say for number five, um, learn to control your state. And what I mean by that is control the mood that you're in, control Mm -hmm. the vibration that you're in. That's probably like the big, big, big one, because whatever vibration you're in right now currently is causing you to feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. That feeling that you're vibrating is triggering the law of attraction, making you a magnet and bringing things towards you. Mm -hmm. And when those things come towards you, that's that's the result you're getting. Right. So if you can start with the cause and effect where you control how you're feeling, control your vibration, you know, making sure you're in a high state, love, joy, peace, gratitude. Gratitude is one of the most powerful ones. But staying in a state of gratitude, then that way you're more grateful. That way you'll attract more things and more things that are positive. And if something don't work out for you, just find a way to look at it in a beneficial way. Mm-hmm. Right. So which means it's hard to do. I'm not going for it. It's hard to do. But if you could find a way to be more grateful or just control your state in the present, I think that would help you out a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm going to add number, I'm number six. six. Yeah. I'm going to add number six to that. And I think number six is very personal. I, I know number six is very personal for me because when I was 
sleeping on the floor mm-hmm. with the mattress. Oh yeah, we had a couple the, mattress places <laughs> with the with the the yeah. mice with the ninja mice with the um with the lack. Of, you think there was a, there was a Jamaican mouse? It's Jamaican. There's a Jamaican mouse. Yeah. The lack of um, funds and just like not knowing what's the next step, not knowing what to do, not n- not even w- wanting to get up, feeling depressed, and all of that stuff. What helped? And this is a secret sauce right here. And I didn't understand it until now. What helped was I imagined where I wanted to be every single day. Mm. And what helped was I was grateful where I was every single day. And what I mean by that is I would wake up and I would say, I, I'm unhappy at the fact that my mattress is on the floor because my bed broke. But I would say, you know something? God, thank you. Thank you for mm-hmm. this bed that I'm sleeping on. Mm-hmm. God, thank you. Thank you for the food that's in my fridge. God, mm-hmm. thank you. And I would imagine, you know, because I, I went to, I saw, I visually saw the house that I wanted to be, and I co- constantly remember the ceiling fan. Mm. So I would have moments. Me and Dava would be like, "Yo, let's let, what would we, what would we call it?" Oh, let's go, let's go uh, visualize. Let's go visualize. What you doing? I'm gonna take a when whenever you're stressed <laughs> out and you're stressed. mad. Right. Where are you going? I'm gonna take a visualization nap. <laughs> right. And you just go take a 15 minute right. nap and visualize your goals. So you're just visualizing like where yeah. you wanted to be, and I think that's what has helped us. Yeah. Um, transition, transform to you know where we were trying to go because it's yeah. hard it's, it's hard, hard when you're in it because you're like yeah, yeah but how are we gonna make it i'm in yeah it, i'm know? in it right you and, don't understand i'm in it yeah and time goes by so quick yeah you know it's Sorry. already three years yeah. and it, we're just like we yeah. here and we kind of like we we have we can't touch the ceiling <laughs> in the yeah. house and yeah. we're like damn wow i, I remember closing up our shop and packing up the furniture out of that business. Mm-hmm. And that was in 2018. Mm-hmm. And now we're in 20, that's five years ago. Right. I remember that. It's just so, so, so it's like- And that was, that was painful. Right, was we're painful. gonna talk about that. Um, that so painful. just know like, it's very important to, to, to keep a grateful state. So yeah. when he was saying like, you know, learn to, to, to control your state, you know, a few things that I personally did is I didn't give myself time to reminisce or think about the bad. So what that means is as soon as I woke up, I played gospel music. As yeah. soon as I woke up, I would be putting something in my ears because the thoughts in my head would just just make me bring me down because yeah. I would just constantly re- rethink everything that's going on in my life. Yeah. So it's like, you know, when you wake up in the morning, if you're used to listening to, to, to stuff that's going to bring your energy, bring your yeah. mood down, switch that. Yeah, ease, up, ease up on the vibes cartel. I love cartel, but you ease up on the vibes cartel. <laughs> so <laughs> I think up on like, the young stuff for life. <laughs> Gotta ease up on that. So I think that was it. Yeah, so, we hit number six, right? Yeah, that's six. So yeah. just to recap, um, I don't remember what I said, but I think I said faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, you said taking action. Decision. Deci- no, it was action first. Faith. Uh, taking some action. Uh-huh. Um, it was environment. Mm-hmm. Then it was uh, decision. Uh-huh. Then it was uh, controlling your feeling. Uh-huh. And for you, was gratitude. Was grat was kind of the same thing. Kind of the same uh, thing because I was piggyback piggybacking off okay. of what you say. It was just like you know, just controlling your state. You know, changing yeah. But I don't it. want you to ride my back on a piggyback. So how you want me to ride your front? No, just make your own way. <laughs> just make it. But listen, guys, uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this show. Uh, once again, to find us, we are the Entrepreneur Couple. That's uh, To look us up, it's The Entrepreneur Couple. Yes, it's long. That's The Entrepreneur, the couple. entrepreneur couple. Once again, it's The entrepreneur, entrepreneur Couple with a T-H in the front and mm-hmm. an Entrepreneur Couple. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. And I'm Dominique Felicia. and Felicia. We are The Entrepreneur Couple, in case yeah. you don't know. Um, if you guys like this episode, make sure you guys are... Uh, so follow us, subscribe, like, uh, do the things comment. you know you're supposed to do. Right. Uh, it feels weird saying these things. Is it because I'm not used to saying these things? It's because you're not used to it. So I got to get used to it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then we need to have something that we're going to be pitching in the middle of the show. Like, you know, take a break and then start selling something. We're going to be selling something? I don't think anybody get into anything without the mindset of selling unless you just want to talk. Yeah. So, guys, you can let us know what you want us to sell you. Let me know. <laughs> Let us know what you want us to sell you. Comment, sell me this, and I'll do my best to sell it to you. I can't make any promises, 
but uh, I'll do my best. So with that being said, do you have an outro line? Because I have an outro line. If you don't have an outro line, I mean, I can give my outro line. So I can pick you back off your outro line. No, you can make your own lane. Uh So my outro line is keep practicing, keep believing in yourself. You got this. What's your outro line? My outro line is um, it's all in you. Just do it. You're. (laughs) All right. Peace. (laughs) Later. That's good. That's good. That's great. Why? You make a good couple. The only thing we did was turn the camera on. This is we. Oh, don't tell me this. You know, I did hear it go ding. Memory full? No. What? I don't know. Let's see.